In this video, we'll discuss the difference between the address and the address payable type. Let's quickly declare the contract. Code is alert. So before discussing the difference, let's see how to declare the address and the address payable type. So you can declare the address type with the address keyword, address, followed by the variable name, let's say owner, like this. And then the address type you can declare address payable followed by the variable name let's say receiver like this let's set this to public and to set the variable address payable public you need to set it public here because if you'll try to set the public keyword here in between address and payable it won't allow you because your address and the payable should be in continuation. So you can set it like this. Public. Basically address and address payable both stores the address. Address can be of external type or your contract address. So let's say I want to store this address. So let me copy this. So I can store just like this. But inside the address payable, if you'll try to store this address, it won't allow you. So if you'll do something like this, so you see this error here. So it is because this is a simple address type. To store the address in the address payable, we need to typecast it into payable. So we can do something like this. Let's say payable. So it will typecast it into the address payable. So now let me remove it from here. Let's declare a function to see the functionality of both address and the address payable. So type function get bal get balance set it to public. So here I can do honor equals to message dot sender. So message dot sender will give us the address of the person who has called this function. It could be the direct person or it could be the address of the contract. Now that we are done with that. So here we can do one more thing. So let's do return. So basically we can return the balance of these addresses. So first to honor dot balance. So these are the global functions which are provided by Solidity. So you can query the balance of any address. So here we are querying the balance of simple address type. You can do the same thing for the receiver as well. So I can do receiver dot balance and let's return it here returns so the balance is u in 256 so i can do u int it is the alias for u int 256 only like this so let's deploy this contract and now if I'll call the get balance function, so it should give us the balance of both the addresses. So let's see it here. You can see the balance for message.sender since we call this function via this address. So it is giving us the balance of this address. You can see it is starting with 999. And then we copied this address here ending with B2. This is the B2. So this is giving us 100 ethereum balance here because it is the balance of this address so balance function is common between both the address and the address payable type so let's see the other functions that we have available for the address payable address payable has two more functions transfer and send so the transfer and send functions is used to receive the balance on the address for example you can do something like this let's say receiver dot transfer let's say i want to send 10 ethereums to this address so this statement means i want to send 10 ethereums to this address which means this address from my contract when you do something like this you are sending the balance from your contract into this address now this is not necessarily to be an external address you can also send the balance to some other contract address but it is used just within the contract 
just like the external address your contract address can have balance for example for uh, this contract this is the address of uh, our contract so this address can also have the ethereum balance and that's what we are using it when we say we want to transfer 10 ethereum to this address that means we are transferring the balance from this address this contract address to this receiver so we will see how to receive the balance in the contract address there will be a different video for that but for now just understand this is how we are transferring the balance to the receiver the another function is send so i can do something like this as well let's do send so the difference between the transfer and send is send will return the true and false statement so you have to manually keep track if the transfer was successful or not if it was not successful then you have to handle the situation accordingly but in the transfer if the transfer was failed then it will auto revert all the states in the uh, ethereum virtual machine but both of these functions are not recommended after the Istanbul upgrade there is another function that we will be using for the transfer but we'll discuss those in our different video so for now just keep it simple so the only difference between the address and the address payable is address payable is used to receive the ethers inside your contract how to receive the ethers inside your contract we'll discuss it in our next video so let's remove this from here so what else can we do with the address payable and the address so the another uh, thing you can do is so since these are the hexadecimal values so you can perform the comparison between the addresses so what do i mean by that so let me quickly show you the value let me copy this so this is basically an integer value so in the python shell i can copy and paste it and you can see this is the numeric value so which means you can check conditions like if it is greater than or less than i'm just giving you an idea i don't know in which situation you would require to compare the addresses but I just wanted to show you this is possible. So let's copy this address now. Let's paste this. And you can see this is a numeric value as well. So this value is bigger than this one because it is starting with 9. It is starting with 5. So we can see this number is bigger. So now here I can do something like let's say require. So require is just like your if statement so basically you can compare some condition and accordingly you can move forward if that condition is not satisfied it will revert the state of your uh, ethereum virtual machine and it will uh, come out of the function it won't execute the other steps so let's do if receiver is greater than owner so we know in our case receiver is greater than owner so it should it should execute these steps but if in case there is a failure so i should display this message receiver is smaller than owner and semicolon just like that so now let's remove this let's delete this as well let's deploy the new copy of our contract and let me call the get balance now so it should execute now because we know the receiver is greater than owner so let's try another case where the owner is uh, smaller than the receiver so i can just either instead of changing this let's see let's do this so now it should fail so do this get balance and you can see it shows receiver is smaller than owner and we know that that receiver is uh, greater than owner but we are checking if it is less than so that's the reason it failed here so which means it is simply checking if the value of your address is greater than or less than so now that we are done with that so that's pretty much about the address and the address payable we have covered almost everything in our next video we will see how to use the payable keyword to receive the ethers inside your contract